Kate. As part of my Invincible Oboist course, my participants get access to my Read Repair Shop service, so which is you know my eyes, my knife, my brain looking at their exact reads. Um, and I'm sharing these for you. So right here I'm looking at three reads um, from my participant, Kathy. Um, the reads, she gave me a, a page of descriptions of these reads. They all seemed different to her, and they're all on different tubes because she was working on uh, learning about these different tubes. Um, but all of three of them came down to really the same fundamental issue, which was really interesting and hopefully very enlightening for her and hopefully for you as well. Hi, Kathy. I'm looking at these three reads, which are on three different tubes, as you know, and I find finding them really, really interesting in actually many of the ways that we already talked about this afternoon in class. Um, the first thing that I notice is that all of them feel great. They feel easy to play, maybe almost for me a little too easy. And there's a real difference in the way in the stability of your reads. Um, versus the easiness. So for me, um, when I make my reads, I really aim for a read that is flexible in pitch so I can bend it around and so that I can more, uh, very easily slide from one note to another. Um, but that is fairly resistant because I like to be able to blow like safely against something. And What's interesting to me is that all of your reads, uh, while they work just fine, have a stronger stability, meaning that it's a little bit more difficult to uh, change the color or change the pitch level, um, and less resistance, so that they're actually physically easier to play right away. And since clearly that's something that you that you like, I'm not criticizing that as a problem, I'm, I'm observing it. Um, then the other thing that I observed, which was really interesting, is that on all three of these reeds, although you have a very clear-cut rooftop here, for example, um, you have another line, fainter, almost invisible, up here that I can only see when I'm back, when you're backlit, um, above which there is no more thickness in the tip. So right in this area, it's sort of like smoky, smoky, smoky smoke all over the top of the uh, of the rooftop, of the sky just above your rooftop. And then right there, it just stops. And you've gone thin, 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 right across the top. And I feel like if you wanted a little bit more nuance in these reeds, I think you could work your slope to be slopier out toward the side and not be quite, not take quite such a long uh, slice off the very top, trying to get the the tip to be thin. I might try to get that in another way. So, um, where shall I start? I'm gonna start with this guy, the middle guy, which is on one of my synthetic cork tubes. You've already said that you um, really love those, and I love them too. I think they're great. Um, let me just toot on it real quick. The thing that I feel right away when I try to crow it is that there's almost no stop between the tip vibration, the first high note that we get, and the lower part of the crow. It comes right away and it's very, very easy. And that makes sense to me because you... Um, because there's not a really strong wall from the between the tip and the heart. There's not a really uh, strong dugout area behind the heart. So the heart is really very much all part of the slope here. Um, and it's going to be interesting to me to try to find a little bit more um, smoothness in this read, but let me play it first. read. Um, it's really nice. For me it feels a little bit too easy and I would want a little bit more um, potential darkness in the sound and a little bit more uh, slow down for the vibrations just so I can blow against it more and not have to like protect it with my mouth so much. Um, and you can tell me after I send this back whether I'm going too far or doing something that it feels inappropriate. But what I'm thinking is just ever so gently to take the outside of the tip on the right side and on the left side 
because it feels to me as though you're fairly uniformly thin across the tip. It is not super thin. You do have this slope built in, but it's built in a little like arbitrarily with you've got a, a chimney right here at the top of your heart and then a really thin place right up above it. So instead of that, I'm going to try to compensate by making sure that the corners are the tiniest bit thinner than the center of the tip. I'm going to do that on both sides just right up from the gutter of the rooftop to the corner. Because ultimately I feel like I would like to clip this just because the the, um, the resistance feels so low that this reed feels a little scary to me. So here I've done the same thing on both sides, basically just taking the sides of the tip all the way up to the corner And what that did was immediately drop the crow so I can clip just a tiny. And that, for me, slowed down the, uh, slowed down that crow, slowed down the low vibrations just the tiniest bit. taking the making sure that the corners were the thinnest part instead of having the entire top millimeter of the reed be the thinnest part um, sweetened the sound for us right away I don't know if you can hear that on the recording I hope you'll uh, see it when I send this back to you um, I'm a little disinclined to do too much more though I do want to explore um, because we talked about it in class earlier the thickness of the spine in the middle of the heart but let me explore that on another read because I like this one quite a lot. Set it here. Uh, this guy was really interesting to me. You've put him on a Pisoni tube. Um, and I know that from experience that these Pisoni tubes are very, very heavy. I'm dipping it again. Uh, are very, very heavy. And it's hard sometimes to overcome the resistance of the tube itself. Um, but this read is sort of the most dramatically overscraped of any of them. And I see what you were trying to do. You were trying to get this... Uh, tube, this big heavy tube to vibrate. But I think what you've ended up with is A, um, a very, uh, again, a clear cut line right across here, which makes it look as though this area is the thinnest part, because maybe it's, it's not thinner at the very, very corners. Um, you've ended up with, you've scraped through the heart quite a lot. And I know we talked about this, right? Trying to get the vibration going into this, into this uh, heavy tube. Um, but somehow I don't know that this is translated the way you want it to. Here's what I get. The crow is uh, about a B and it feels a little bit weak to me. And when I play this read, It's a little bit um, overly soft, it's a little bit overly closed, and when I get up into the upper register, it's a little wild. Um, basically because I think it's underbalanced. You've got it to a place where it's crowing, um, where it's crowing a bee, where it is vibrating, but the, your tip is too long and too thin in the center to support what's going on. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the sides and corners of the tip, and I'm going to take them lower down in the tip than you had before. Just that rightmost and leftmost two to three grains all the way up to the corner, both sides. And I'm hoping by doing this to just put a very slightly stronger cut in right at the gutter of the rooftop between your tip and your heart and make sure that the corners of the tip slope out away from the center. Okay, so that's all I've done. You saw me literally take the rightmost and leftmost three grains on the side of the tip, both sides. Uh, I'm sure the crow has dropped. I'm gonna clip. I brought the crow up, but it still feels very easy. Let's see what I've done. Well, what 
I like is that up in the upper register, I've got security now. Um, there's not so much wildness up around the B and the B flat and the C. Um, what I don't like is that this reed feels very closed still. And I want it to give me more. Dare I clip more to get the opening up? Or do I need to scrape first? Because the reed just feels compressed to me when I play it, um, partly that's the thickness of the of the tube, I'm sure. Um, but what I want is more resonance, and as you know, that's about the windows. So let's see what happens if I go into your back, right behind the heart. Because you scraped a lot out of the heart, which we knew you were going to, to get the tube to vibrate, but somehow the heart now thinks it's kind of weenie, and so the reed feels kind of weenie. And for me, the advantage of these Pisoni tubes is that you get some bulk going on in the reed that you can really blow against. There, that feels a little bit better. I'm going to clip one more time and get that balanced, and I think maybe we've got a read. So, to review, um, on this read, I primarily dealt with the sides and corners of the tip, and then I opened up the windows behind the heart to try to get more sound out of this reed. Um, and I actually think that was pretty successful. I thought that I was going to, when I, when I first picked up this reed, I thought I was going to talk about the strong spine that goes all the way through the heart and the chimney that goes up into the tip, but those honestly don't bother me at all once I got the corners of the tip to be the thinnest part. Um, and that uh, also on this original read has made the biggest difference for me. Just bringing that sweetness and that um, uh, structure to the tip of the tip. So we've got this other tube. It's a chirugi, but it's a thicker chirugi. Um, you sent me a sample of it, which is here. The DN reads. I think that's double or nothing reads, right? Um, it's a nice looking brass tube, fits my mandrel precisely, and it's got a, a little bit of a heavy weight to it. Heavier even maybe than my silver Pisoni tube, which is notoriously a heavy tube. And compared to my Chirugi 2 Plus, you can see, I think, that the uh, walls are much, much heavier. So I'm curious about this tube. And this reed, Again, crows a little bit low. And it is my favorite of your, uh, of the reads that you sent. It works the, for me the most immediately. It's got a really nice, uh, healthy sound. I still feel a little bit of that wildness right up at the very, very top, the high B, B flat C. See if you hear what I'm talking about. I have to um, hold on to it a little bit up there. And my gut feeling is that the exact same trick will settle that down. If I go right to the side of the heart, excuse me, the side of the, of the tip, and up from there on both sides, um, just so that instead of being uh, rooftop, and semi-tip and then real thin tip, it's a more organic slope. Um, and I'm not touching this chimney that you've got in the, in the, at the, right above the peak of your roof, right? It's sort of a smokestack coming up. Um, we've talked about this before. It's a stronger chimney, a stronger 
spine going all the way through the reed than I use, but it doesn't bother me here. I like the stability of this reed. It just needs to have a, a better sound and a little more control up high. Maybe for interest's sake, after I do this, after I deal with the uh, sides and corners of the tip, I will go back and take that chimney. We'll see how we feel. Because I'm not bothered by the fact that your reed is constructed a little bit differently from mine, right? The uh, the fact that you've got a visible spine up through the uh, windows, through the back, all the way through the heart and up into the tip is not something that I do. Although I'm aware of thickness in the middle of my reed, I don't try to have a visible, tangible, is tangible a word? Um, spine all the way up into the tip, but you do, and these reeds are working absolutely fine, so there's no problem with that. All right. So, so after scraping all four sides of the tip, right up into the corner, and clipping a relatively healthy amount, um, this reed is beautiful. It feels very collected in in an appropriate way. It feels very... Uh, the pitch is really, really nice. The level of resistance feels great to me. I'm actually super enthusiastic about this uh, DNR tube, although I'm a little giggly about it being called DNR. Like, if, it, if a corner breaks off, should I just kill it? Um, that was a bad joke. But I quite like this, and I'm going to try the, uh, the tube that you sent to because I'm curious about that too. Um, but I think these reeds are really, really beautiful, and I can very clearly generalize that the thin, the very, very, the thing that you are doing to try to get extreme thinness at the tip of the tip is for me a little bit too um, generalized. Because you're scraping right in the middle there to bring it up, it feels a little too abrupt, and the center ends up getting thinner than the corners, and that is really the primary flaw that I'm seeing in these reeds. I think they're great otherwise. You know, you too can participate in a reed repair shop service. Um, these are available on my website at JanetIngle.com. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you get a chance. I appreciate that so much. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.